can make your way back to your pew. It's been a great privilege to have Brother and Sister Heron with us. He has just done a wonderful job walking in the Holy Ghost in every service called a war this morning. And we just appreciate his ministry and his preaching. And I want Brother Heron to come right now and preach to us the word of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't we thankful that the Lord filled 24 people with the Holy Ghost this morning? What, what a beginning to the new year. Amen. And I, I give uh, Pastor Kinsey honor. I, he's such a powerful man of God. He's influenced the entire world for so many years. I hope you realize how blessed you are to have his leadership. Would you clap your hands and honor him? He's a... Uh, I look up to him in so many ways and appreciate his preaching and watch him all the time on the internet and just I really, really love him dearly and his family. I give honor to the Welch family. What a hero we've had in Brother Welch. Would you one more time thank the Lord for his legacy and all that he has left in this city. Give honor to them tonight. Amen. Give honor to Brother Stafford, Brother Stroll. Well, these guys are awesome guys. And you're very blessed with the leadership and the leadership team that you have here. You're, it's obviously God has his hand upon this church. Amen. And I give honor to my sweet, beautiful wife and our kids and travel with me all the time all across the world. And, and uh, it's, it's such a blessing to work for the kingdom of God. I have felt uh, a certain message all week long for tonight. And I have wrestled with it and prayed about it for several days. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 38, and the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 38, verses 6 through 13, and Lamentations 3, 52 through 57. Praise God. Thank you for having us. We are honored to be here with you. Amen. Jeremiah 38, verse 6. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Melchiah, the son of Hamelech that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire, so Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when Abedmelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, for he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. The king commanded Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. So Abimelech took the men with him and went to the house of the king under the treasury, took thence old cast clouts and old rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Abimelech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thine armholes, under the cords, and Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison Lamentations chapter 3 verse 52 to 57 now we just read what happened to Jeremiah and now Jeremiah is going to explain what happened just now in our text Jeremiah is saying these words my enemies chase me sore like a bird without cause they have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me waters float over mine head then I said I am cut off I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, fear not. I have a mandate from the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to preach to you from the subject tonight, the prophet in the dungeon the prophet in the dungeon. 
Lord Jesus, have your way. I feel the authority of your spirit. Anoint me and anoint the people to be in one mind and one accord right now. Thank you for what you did this morning. Only you could do something like that. And we praise you in advance for something only you can do tonight. Have your way in this place. Give us the mind of the spirit in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? You may be seated. I apologize for the voice. This is my 4,037th service this week, I think. Amen. Everybody in here that has the Holy Ghost is appointed by God to do something for the kingdom of God. He did not fill you just to find you a spot in this church and say, this is your seat in the pew and you will sit here till you die. He has filled you because he has something for you to do in the kingdom. If you're not dead yet, it's because he still has something for you to do in this kingdom that we call earth. He is working through us. Every person in here is appointed by God to do something. There's someone only you can talk to and witness to about what the Lord has done and only your testimony will work in their situation. There's a song only you can sing. There's a message only you can release because you are appointed by God to do something. He did not accidentally fill you with his spirit, accidentally deliver you, accidentally save your family. Everything has been in divine order with him from the beginning of your lifetime every failure every pain every mistake every blessing every breakthrough everything is working out for your good believe it or not the bad things and the good things are working together right now for the will of God in your life everyone is appointed by God to do something powerful. Jeremiah's name means the appointed one. He was appointed by God. You talk about a powerful ministry. While he was a kid, God called him. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. It was Jeremiah that said he couldn't do it. He was just a kid. But the Lord said, don't look at their faces. Just do what I told you to do. And Jeremiah was the one that told us that his mercies are new every single morning. Aren't you thankful for someone that answered the call of God thousands of years ago and you can read a verse that says the Lord will be with me every single day because someone answered the call. It was Jeremiah who wanted to quit preaching. He was tired and worn out, said, I'm done doing this. But then he said, the word of God was inside him like a burning fire, shut up inside of his bones, and he could not stop. And now when you want to quit, that little verse comes back to you, and you remember, I can't walk away because the word of God is inside me like a fire that's shut up inside of my bones. It was Jeremiah who went down to the potter's house and saw the potter forming the clay and putting it on the wheel and therefore we get the picture of who we are the broken clay the messed up mistakes in life that we've done and the person that we are and God is the potter and despite all of our flaws and failures and issues he can still pick us up and is there anyone in here that God's ever picked you up in the mess that you were in and put you back on the wheel I'm not talking before you got baptized. I'm talking after you were filled with the Holy Ghost and you still dropped the ball and yet the Lord picked you back up and placed you in his will. Jeremiah told us all about that kind of God. He was powerful. But oftentimes, and people that are anointed and appointed will tell you this, that when you are anointed and appointed, you will often be disappointed by people. Because believe it or not, hell hates people that are anointed by God for greatness. They can't stand people that are anointed by God for the great things of the kingdom. They cannot stand world changers. And when you are a world changer, the devil will make sure you have more enemies than you do friends because he cannot stand what's in your spirit and what you release out of your mouth. Whether you're teaching a Sunday school lesson or you're witnessing to someone on your job or you're preaching behind this pulpit, when you are doing something for the kingdom of God or you're praying in your closet, hell cannot stand that type of person. It's funny how Jeremiah was so appointed and so close to God, but so hated by everybody. 
I mean, no one liked him. They called him the weeping prophet. No one liked to hear Jeremiah preach. See, everybody loves you, when you if you preach about blessings and, and revival and miracles and your family's going to make it and God has a plan and your dream's going to come true. People love those type of preachers. But when you say repent or else, preachers go all over America and preach about God blessing and, and do all these things and God, and people love them. But when you say America needs to repent or judgment will come, then all of a sudden people don't like that type of preaching. That's why you've got to make sure you're called by God and not man. Because if man has called you, man will intimidate you out of what you're supposed to say. But if God has called you, you do not care what man says against you. You know I have a mandate from God to say what I'm saying. You didn't call me and you didn't die for me, but there's someone who did call me, someone who did die for me, someone who did heal my body. And we are to do all things unto him. Jeremiah was preaching, and no one liked his preaching. It wasn't that they didn't like it or it bothered them. It was that they hated it. Because every time he would open his mouth, he would say, you better repent. Babylon's coming. We're all going to die. <laughs> Bet the revival wouldn't go on very long if the preacher was preaching about that every service. Repent or die. That was his message. And they said, we can't stand it. It was so convicting that they had him arrested, put in prison, and not just in prison, in the dungeon of the prison. And we think of an underground prison cell. That's not what this was. The word dungeon here is a well or a cistern, a well in the ground, in the prison yard, and they said, we'll put him there. Now, according to all the commentaries I've read, this is pretty graphic, but you got to get this, that what they would do to the worst of the worst criminals was they would throw them in this low dungeon, put a rock on top of the well, and you would starve to death underground. And they said, that's where the preacher belongs let's lower the man of God to such a level that we can't hear him let's place ourselves in a position where we feel that we are above him you better be careful when you start saying something about pastor. I've come in the Holy Ghost tonight. Love me or hate me, never have me back. I'm telling you what the Lord said. And if pastor gets up and preaches on something and you lean over to a friend and say, that's just pastor being pastor. That's just pastor on a rant. You know what you're doing? You are throwing him down into a place where you do not have to submit or obey the words that are coming out of his mouth because you're taking the words lightly. And if you're only submitted to him when he edifies you and blesses you, but you do not listen or submit when he st speaks a word of rebuke or challenge to you, you are one of the people that throws prophets in dungeons. Where are the real people in this church that are with their pastor right now? If you're with him, would you act like you're with him right now? I draw a line in the sand right now. God is watching. Are you with your man of God right now? Would you thank the Lord for every message he has preached, every prayer he has prayed? Slow him down. And, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a screaming prophet. Let's put a rock on top of him. So we can't hear him. Well, I would never do that. You do that when you skip church services. 
When pastor says, let's be faithful, and we someone skips two out of three service, you know what you're doing in the spirit world? You're putting a rock on your preacher. Because how can you hear him if you're not here? Y'all don't want me back, do you? <laughs> I know I'm not preaching to the whole church, but there's a few I'm preaching to. Uh-huh. And when people start lowering the man of God, what is lowering the man of God? Well, when you shake his hand in church, oh, Pastor Kenzie, I love you so much. You're such a good, thank you so much. And then you crucify him at your lunch table with your family. Don't be mad at pastor in 20 years if your kid doesn't want to follow you when you will not follow the man of God now. now. I'm sorry. I'm just preaching straight tonight. I feel God on me tonight. I've been praying and fasting. The Lord wants us to be submitted and humble and surrendered to his will and his authority. And when they threw him down, they put that rock. They said, now, preach now, Jeremiah. Go ahead, scream now. Warn us now. We don't have to hear you. And people love it when they do not get convicted. Because we don't like conviction. We don't like it. So how do we not, if I can't hear him, I won't get convicted. And you'd be surprised the people that will get mad at pastor take a few weeks off from church. And then when they no longer feel convicted, come back to church just to get convicted again. <laughs> just to get mad again. Just to leave again. And what they're doing is their flesh is in a war with God's word. And God's word is trying to save them, but their flesh is in rebellion. And when your flesh is stronger in your life than the word is, how can you hear without a preacher? Now, I'm going to hit somebody right between the eyes. And if you think that you hear from God more than your pastor does. I said this in Call to War, but there's about 500 less people than there are here now. So I'm going to say it again. If you think you hear from God and then you hear from pastor and pastors preaching from the word goes against what you heard from God. I know you're going to like this, but I dare you to submit yourself because I don't think you're really hearing from God. Because if you're hearing from God and it goes against the word of God being led by your shepherd, then something's wrong with what you're hearing. You've got another angel in your ear trying to seduce you and keep you from what the word is trying to say. Can I get a witness in here? Here's what you do if you think you're hearing from God. Lord, let pastor confirm that I'm hearing from God. Let him preach what I'm hearing in my spirit. And if it goes against what I'm hearing, then I'm in the wrong. And thank you for a man of God that will speak direction into my family, into my spirit, so I can walk on the right pathway. Somebody thank God for pastor right now. Somebody thank the Lord for a man of God that you have. They threw him. Now, these commentators I've read, man, talk about graphic. They, they said they took these cords, Bishop. They'd put them around your armpits, lower you in this little well, and then rip the cords back causing you to bleed from the armpit region where you would just you'd shred your skin off and drop you in this mud and mire. Josephus said when they dropped Jeremiah in, he was buried up to his neck in the mire. Couldn't bow his head, he'd drown. And Josephus said Jeremiah is stuck up to his neck in this mire. And now watch, Jeremiah has been lowered into a... It's cold, it's quiet, it's dark... It's lonely. 
it's painful. And he said, I was in this low place. And I said, God, I cried unto you. And he said, the Lord spoke back to me. God heard a head popping out of mud under the ground saying help me and the Lord left the throne of heaven went through the stratospheres and the atmospheres into a prison yard through a rock down the limestone to a head popping out of mud and said fear not then went back up the limestone through the rock out the prison yard up into the sky back into glory that's all he said fear not what do you do when God only says fear not but doesn't tell you why. It's hard to have faith in a fear not without an explanation behind the fear not. It's hard to believe when someone walks up and prays for you, hey, hang in there, it's going to be all right, but they don't tell you anything else. God's going to save your family. When? God's going to come through. When? God's going to intervene. When? Hang in there. It's going to be all right. Fear not. And all he heard from God was two words. Fear not. See, the reason why fear not takes faith is because if he says fear not, I've got all this and this and this going on right now, and in a few moments they're going to lift you out of this well. It's, it doesn't take faith to, to, to receive that. That's just receiving a word from God. That's just knowing what's going to happen. That's knowledge. But fear not with no explanation now requires me to live in a dimension of faith that until you come through, however or whoever you use or whenever the time is, I've got to hang on right now until the end answer comes that requires faith fear not why did God only say two words and not explain himself I'll tell you why because at the same moment that God was saying fear not to the preacher God had an intercessor going to the king on the preacher's behalf And Abedmelech goes to the king on the prophet's behalf. The prophet can't see him. He doesn't hear what's going on. Anytime God tells you hang in there, somebody will pray your answer into your life. That was cute. You didn't get it right there. Anytime God does not tell you when it's going to happen, that means somebody else will be praying for you when it does happen. Someone needs to stop asking God for the direction and the clarity and start saying, God, have somebody pray for my family right now. Have somebody pray for my situation right now. And they threw him and he looked. And now God has somebody working on the preacher's behalf saying, King, we've got to get him out of there. They're going to kill him in there. He's going to die in there. They want to starve him to death there. They want to bury him alive there. And the king said, take 30 men with you. Now, here's why I'm so jacked up right now. Because I'm, I'm crazy and I'm weird and I don't deny it. And he asked my wife, she probably thinks it's worse than that. But I told Brother Stafford and today, I, said, I feel the Lord has a word for this church about the pastor. And when they went to gather around him earlier tonight to pray, he said to me, that's your confirmation. But the Lord said, look again. And when I turned and looked, I counted, and exactly 30 people were praying for you. Oh, it's cute. Okay. He said, take 30 men that will pull on the preacher when he's in a low place. Send him 30 men that know how to, I'm going to start preaching to some men. Every man in here ought to stand up right now. Hear me. When this man of God gets in this pulpit, you ought to be pulling on him like you've never pulled on anything in this world. Preach, Bishop, preach. When the man of God gets up here, something in your spirit ought to be yanking on your pastor. Preach it to me. Preach to my family. Preach to my kids. Preach to my marriage. Preach to my house. 
Are there any men in here that are willing to pull on your pastor and say, we're here for you, come hell or high water? You know what we ought to do right now? Let the men lift up their voice in a war cry and let hell hear you as you stand up for the man of God. Ladies, would you join them right now and lift up your voice and thank the Lord for your pastor and his family. Revival has begun. Give him 30 times the strength, 30 times the resources, 30 times the favor, 30 times the power, 30 times the energy, 30 times the anointing, 30 times the blessing. Now, ladies, I'm, I'm going to leave you alone, but I'm going to say one, one thing to you. If you're submitted to pastor, but not Sister Kinsey, am I all right? Then you're not submitted to pastor, because they are one. Oh, it's cute. I got, I got a few stairs right there. But don't tell me you love pastor, but don't love his wife. That's not love. That's lust. Where's the shouters at right now? Someone ought to thank the Lord for your pastor's wife right now. Can a lady in this building, even if she's not in here, can a lady in here thank the Lord for someone? Don't tell me you love me and don't love my family. Don't tell me you love me, but don't love my kids. Don't tell me you pray for me, but not my family. Don't you understand? That's the most important thing to the man of God is his family. The problem with it, I'm going to say it straight. The problem is the preacher is not allowed to bleed in front of people. He has to put the armor on over the blood drips that are falling out over the pain and the heartache and the issues and the fears and the worries and get up here and say to you, God's going to bless you. God's going to help you, pray for you, smile at you, ask how you're doing. Then go back to the office and take off the armor and let the blood drip. I'm going to say it in the Holy Ghost right now. I unleash a plague on this demonic force in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that the prayer warriors of this church within the next 30 days would call their pastor's name and his family's name every single morning with intensity and fervency and fire and that you would hear them in such a way that you would do things for his family that you've never done before. You can stay standing. We're almost done. If you want, you can sit down if you want. I don't care. They took those. He said, get 30 guys. Go to the treasury. And in that treasury, Bishop, there were these old rotten rags. This makes no sense at first until you understand why now. The intercessor at Bimelech thinks of everything. He knows Jeremiah's bleeding from his armpits. He knows he can lift him up, but he also knows my prophet is hurting. So rather than just lower the cords down, he gets these old rags and ties them around the loops and the cords to pad the cord. Because the Holy Ghost is a comforter. And he knows exactly where a bishop hurts. 
And when the Lord starts lifting up pastor, he's not just going to yank him out with the wounds. The Lord said, I'm about to start patting the wounds. I'm going to make the wound scars. I'm going to close up the open things that no one knows about that are making you suffer. And I'm going to close them up and make them scars and pad the area for people praying. Don't just say, God, lift him up, but God, comfort him if he's hurting. Let angels minister to his family. If there's anything I can do, let me do it because I want the man of God to have strength. One time I was at Sam Emory's and I preached this very message and a man started screaming out in the audience. Because the night before, he had a dream that troubled him. He kept seeing Brother Emery walking around bleeding from his armpits. And he was asking God all day, why, is, was that, why am I seeing it? What is that? And he was tormented all day. And I got up and told him the people had no idea that man was even in the building. That when the man of God was bleeding, all of a sudden, Abimelech had to go find, even if it was old rotten rag, he had to find something that would just anything he could do. You may think you're a nobody and pastor don't even know your name, but let me tell you something. You getting up in the morning and saying, Lord, help pastor today, strengthen him. It might be one little rotten rag, but you're taking that rag and you're saying, I'm here with my man of God. I'm helping my man of God can I get help right now I'm going to help him any way that I can if all I ever do is take out the trash or turn off the lights let me do it under the Lord for my prophet and they lifted him up watch this he was still hurting he was still in the prison they couldn't fix everything for him but they could lift him You have the ability to lift him or lower him. Your reactions to his preaching. Your conversations with him and his family. About him will either lift him or lower him. And if you're part of the lowering clan. I prayed it all day and all week. God, sever anyone that wants to lower someone you have sent here and has it a burden for this city. I pray in the name of the Lord that God would send people that have strength in their spirit to say, preach, bishop, preach, and we are going to pull like we've never pulled. Why do you? I'll tell you why. When they lifted him, the word said he looked at Abedmelech and said, even though the enemy's coming, you won't be attacked. You'll survive. Ready? When you lift the prophet, you loose the prophet to speak blessings into your home and protection on your family. When you lower him, You disconnect from his covering and the enemy can see you. But when you lift him, you loose him to preach to you what the Lord wants in your life. If you're looking for him to shout before you do, you won't shout tonight. They lifted him up and it loosed the anointing of the prophet back. I know one thing. I go to a lot of churches, hundreds every year, and I promise you this. It's not like it is here in almost every place. That man right there prays probably more than any pastor I preach for. Oh, do you realize how blessed you are You had Bishop Welch covering you. And now you've got Pastor Kinsey. You're so blessed in the... Oh, he's a preaching preacher for sure. But even more than that, he's a praying preacher. You ought to thank the Lord for that more than anything. Because prayers... Stan, I'm just about done now. I can feel it shifting.
They went to the treasury to lift him up. I feel like doing something apostolic tonight. I've been praying about it for days. I feel like tonight that we ought to bless the man of God who's with me in this building right now. This is not for the church, not for anything that the church needs. I think we ought to bless the pastor tonight. He's got an unbearable load this week coming on him. He's got an unbearable load in the future now. He's got to deal with things. The bishop has gone into the heavenlies. We need to pray and bless the man of God in such a way that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I have done my best to lift my preacher. And when you lift your pastor, you just blessed your own house. When you bless your pastor, you just covered your family. I have come to put the devil in his place right now. This is the man of God for the hour in this city. Would you thank the Lord for him right now? Would you lift up your voice and worship God for the man of God that you have? Some of you are staring at me right now. Remember, God is watching you. You're either the lowering man or you're the lifting man. I can see you. And if you want God to help, you've got to be able to say, Lord, lift him. Lift my pastor. Bless my pastor. Strengthen my pastor's family. Wait a minute. I, I feel to do two things in the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel to pray for him and his family, obviously. For strength, for wisdom, whatever they need. But I also feel to bless them tonight. Let's bless them. Let's pray first because the men are already up here. Let's pray first. I want everyone to pray, not just for them, but what you should do as a family tonight for your pastor and for his family. Would you stretch forth your hands and would you pray right now for Pastor Kinsey and Sister Kinsey, their children, their grandchildren, that God would save, that God would protect, that God would deliver, that God would rescue, that God would keep his angels around them. Somebody pad the wound right now. Somebody tie a knot on the cord right now. Be the most faithful member you can be. Whatever pastor needs, let there be a line of people ready to do it. I feel like I'm in a church that loves the man of God right now. I feel like I'm in a church that loves their pastor. Someone is only in here because he's prayed and cried over you. And you know you're in here right now because of the protection of the covering that you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's take it one step further. Let's not just do it in word, but in deed. I have prayed and asked God, he said, to do this. Have the people bless the man of God. Bless him financially. I'm going to, you can never have me back. That's okay. That's fine. But I know I'll leave here knowing I obeyed God. That's all that matters to me. 
I want you to return to your seats. I want you to grab your family if they're with you. And I want you to grab their hands. And I want you, we're going to pray together right now what the Lord wants to do. And the Lord is going to do something significant. He told me today, something significant will happen tonight. Something significant will happen tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would obey God and do what the Lord said to do. And if you'll obey God and you lift your pastor with all your might, with whatever you have to bless him, it will return to your home in multiple ways, in financial ways, in salvation ways, in protection ways, in the favor of God. It will return to your home in multiple channels. It will return to your home. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen to what the Lord is saying for you to do right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray you open up every heart, every mind to what your will is tonight. For people to do exactly what you're telling them to do. To bless this man of God. Not the church, not a program, but the man of God. I know he would never do this on his own. That's why you've sent me here. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this church would do something significant. In this shifting, in this transition, I know it's the will of God that I am here. I pray in the name of Jesus as we are going to honor Bishop Welch that you would bless and strengthen Pastor Kinsey in such a way now like never before let the fire be hotter in his spirit than it's ever been before let his energy be stronger than it ever has before and his needs be met tonight whatever they are in Jesus name in Jesus name I don't know if the ushers would come or if you just want to come to the altar, but, but I feel to tell you, right, whatever the Lord's told you to give, I want you to bring it up to the altar right now and stay in the altar if you're physically able. Bring it to the altar, lay it on the altar, whatever you want to do, but obey the Lord right now. And when you obey the Lord and bless your pastor, stay up here because he's going to pray for you before it's over. And the blessing of the Lord is going to return upon your own home. Obey the will of the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Stay up here if you're able. If you can't do it tonight but you're going to bless him, come up here anyway. I don't want to be one of the ones that lowers the man of God. Let me be a Bedmelech. Let me do something only I can do. God's watching right now. God's watching right now. Let this church bless the Kote. Shatorobo Satalamaha Satalamaha. Hilolobo Reko Sokotaraba Sakatai. Hilolobo Reha Shakatala Laboro Shatalamahaya. The man of God's about to pray over you, and the angels of the Lord are going to cover your home tonight. I tell you in the Holy Ghost that there's a fire coming from your pastor like never before. He's always one of the greatest preachers on the entire planet. But the Lord's going to give him even greater revelation, greater giftings, greater favor. All for your family. People are still coming. People are still coming. People are still coming. This is going to be a landmark night for the Kinsey family in Jesus' name. I am obeying you, God. People are still coming. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. People are still coming. He can't fix everything, but we can help him. We can't fix everything, but we can lift him. We can pull on him. We can bless him. We can strengthen him.
Let this be seed in the ground that will be watered by the word of the Lord and the fruits will be manifested in your homes, in your children's lives, in your future, in your family. Someone on the edge just got under the covering of their pastor right now and the plan of hell for next week's attack was just abolished. Abolished and destroyed. Everything the devil was about to do has just been blocked. Someone is under the covering of their pastor and the angel just stepped in front of the attack and said, no longer are th- is this allowed. They are under the covering of the man of God. You cannot afflict them. You cannot touch them. Someone start thanking God for protection right now. Thank him for what's coming right now. The blessing of the Lord. The protection of the Lord. The provision of the Lord. People are still coming. That's intercession right now. That's intercession. Let that out of your mouth right now. This is big time. Go there right now. Go there right now. Release it. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. There are angels in here. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There are needs being lifted. These offerings represent needs, God. Every dollar represents a need. Stretch your hands toward him and let that Holy Ghost loose out of your mouth right now. Let it be loud. Let it be loud. Let it be loosed out of your mouth right now. Let there be unity in the name of Jesus. Let there be unity in the name of Jesus. I don't know two things. I don't know who the elders are, who the board is, Brother Strobe. I don't know who's in charge, but this is not for anybody but him. Can we make sure that whoever's, whoever the elders are, can we make sure that's for him and his family? Are we all in agreement right now? It's not for the church. He can rebuke me later. It's okay. I got thick skin. I can handle it. But a line has been drawn in the sand and the demons know it. You shall retain the revival that was started this morning. A season of revival. A season of harvest. And there shall be retention. Man, I feel prophetic fire up here right now. Everything under his covering shall be blessed. Everything submitted to him shall be blessed. Everything underneath him following him shall be blessed. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You shall be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. When you go out, when you come in, the Lord is going to go before you. Are you ready to welcome your pastor to this pulpit? Whatever he wants to do, pray over you. I hope he prays over you the blessing of the Lord. Whatever he wants to do, would you welcome him like you've never welcomed him? And would you do it continually? May God bless you in Jesus' name. One God 
is a treasure chest. Understand the one God. You open up the treasure chest of other great gifts from this God. In Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Moses told that the daily diet of the Jews would be to hear every morning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thousands, a few thousand of years later, Jesus is asked by some men, would you tell us what is the greatest commandment of all? The first and the greatest. He said, it is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There is no disputing the one God doctrine. Throughout the Bible, thousands of times, over 7,000 times to be exact, the Bible refers to God as being one God, one Lord. 